and say hi and welcome once again to number 10 webinar on our conference for Aussie Live 2015 today. We have been very busy. We have been engaging people in all walks of education and as many time zones as we can fit into our busy schedule. And today I have great pleasure in bringing to the lectern Lisa Delaporte, who is going to be sharing with you today the cultural issues through project-based learning and storytelling and how we can connect with those cultural issues using those <laughs> strategies. <laughs> and we had an informal chat before, so we know that most of you are able to use your microphone. So I'm going to leave it on for this session, so you might like to ask your questions of Lisa in voice later on. We want to say thank you to our sponsors, of course, and to our supporters. And you've heard this one many times, but this might be the first time for Lisa. So Australia E-Series <laughs> is the group of volunteers who run our Community Connect and other series. Um, what else do we have? Um, Tech Talk Tuesdays. <laughs> and a couple of others. I can't think of them right now, but we've been running for several <laughs> years, Lisa, just to put you in the picture. And we do this all voluntarily, and we're very grateful to our patron in the United States, Steve Hargaden, who has linked us to the Learning Revolution Project and allows us to use our Blackboard Collaborate rooms. So I've got a few people in uh, a couple of time zones in Australia. And I know that, um, let me just get a pointer. I know that, where's Thailand? Ah, uh, is it there? Is that where you are, Chris? I'm not sure. My geography is shocking. No, it's up higher. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And Lisa, where are you? What's the actual part of the world you're in? I am in New York. Oh, fantastic. Place I've never <laughs> been. Now that's a busy oh. town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, look, we're ready to hear from you and we want to know your world. So I'm going to hand the microphone over to you. Take it away, Lisa. Awesome. Very exciting, Carol. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, yes, this is my first time doing Aussie Live. Um, it was introduced to me by a, a co-worker, Catherine Storstack, who came on last year and did, did work with the conference. Um, so, you know, My World is a global education organization, and the thing that I'm going to talk to you the most about today is how we connect classrooms all over the world through digital cross-cultural exchange. Um, okay. Learning how to use technology. Okay. All right. So I'm the program operations manager. I've been working with Know My World for a little over two years now. And as the program operations manager, what that means is when teachers sign up for cross cultural exchanges in their classroom and they're trying to organize things, I'm the one who works behind the scenes to make sure everything is in order so your classes run smoothly so you have all of the information that you need to incorporate this activity into your classroom. We are comprised, uh, we're a staff of international educators and teachers. We have all lived in other countries, taught in other countries, traveled to other countries. Uh, this picture of me is actually from when I spent a semester abroad in Ecuador. I worked with the local community. I volunteered at the schools working on environmental sustainability. I taught English at the local college to uh, all different ages. Um, mostly at the college, it was teenagers and adults for people because they're so focused on tourism um, in the Galapagos Islands, which is where I was for three months. Um, so the presentation overview, what we are going to cover today. Uh, we will have an introduction to Know My World. We're going to cover the mission so you understand the philosophy about what it is that we do. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the model, how we get to create all of those things working towards the mission. 
then we're going to discuss the benefits of cross-cultural exchanges, how it can really enhance and enrich your classrooms, and how it really helps the students connect with themselves, with their communities, with the world. And then I'm going to talk about the benefits of facilitation. That's the one aspect of Know My World that is very different from anything else that I've seen out there that is trying to do the same sort of thing. Uh, then we're going to have a discussion. I'm going to show you lots of examples of different exchanges that we've incorporated. And I mean, feel free to ask questions at any time about what these projects were or how you can incorporate something like this into your classroom. And we'll have a how-to session that we're going to go through so you can figure out, you know, how do you get this into your classroom? Where do you get more information? And I will offer a complimentary lesson plan uh, for one of the examples that I'll be sharing along the way. So. All right, so our mission basically is to offer a multitude of platforms and projects for exchange and growth between various countries and cultures. We have different teachers wanting to use different technologies. We support them in that. And we find ways to make sure everything is private, to make sure that there is safety and security for students so they can have this experience from their classroom and still be connected to the world and learn in various ways. Uh, it offers academic advantage because the kids aren't only just learning about their basic subject and content area, but they're collaborating with people from other areas of the world and applying the academics to real life situation. There's social and emotional competency where they begin to develop self-awareness, where they start to focus on responsible decision making in relationship to their families, their communities, and the world at large. And cultural competency, creating empathy and moving to an ethno-relative state where uh, it's not just understanding that we're human beings and we all have the same experience, but understanding that we all come from different places with different cultures and finding ways to respect and, you know, integrate different things from other people's lives into our lives as well. Okay, so how we work. We use story sharing as a means to develop cross-cultural exchanges and project-based learning activities. We work with teachers to make sure that all their goals are being met. Uh, we have digital exchanges, projects, and programs. Um, the digital exchanges incorporate all aspects of project-based learning and story sharing into whatever activities we collaborate with the teachers on. The projects are interdisciplinary that we offer, and they're fully developed, so they just fit right into the classroom. The programs are the same way. They, take tr they, they consist of several projects, and they take place um, over uh, summer a few weeks, summer a couple of months. And they focus on things like leadership, character development, responsible citizenship. Uh, one of the projects that we do, which is actually a lot of fun, I'm doing one of them right now, is called Play It Forward, where uh, students of any age can do this. Adults have done this before, where you have a conversation about culture, and you get to teach a game that is relevant to your culture, you write down the instructions, you explain how to play it, and you record yourself playing it, and you share it with someone else in the world. And we open up a dialogue between you and another culture, so your video gets sent to children or to people in another culture so they can learn to play your game, and you can watch a video and learn a game that they're playing. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of an idea about um, story sharing, this is the first aspect of uh, of Know My World. This is there's there's such power in story sharing. There are so many ideas that we have running around in our heads about why we are the way that we are, and you know our fears about living life or being fully self-expressed, and I've found that through story sharing, I've really come into becoming more connected, I guess, with who I am as an individual. I was sharing once with a friend of mine 
my love of music and how I've always wanted to like be a performer and play guitar and but I just when I get in front of people I <laughs> like no no voice no sound comes out of my mouth and this friend of mine was a little bit older and started sharing her story about her life with me and all of the things that she regretted not doing and so when I went to the Galapagos I, I decided to buy a guitar and I went to the Galapagos and I made friends with the band, the only band that was present on the islands. And I explained to them my fear, and we they had a campfire that they would sit around and play music. And at the end of the night, there were very few people left. So they would allow me the opportunity to practice without a whole lot of people around, because I told them that I wanted to work on this. And through sharing my stories with other people, I've gotten to the point in my life where one of my hobbies is going out to open mic nights and singing songs that I write and connecting with other people who are doing the same exact thing. And I just found such power in what that created in my life that I, this project is just so amazing. It's so impacting in finding ways to share our stories and how they help other people. Because if my friend hadn't shared with me the regrets that she had of not doing the things she had feared, I, I might never have gone out and even bought a guitar. Um, so this is an example of two kids, uh, Mahesh and Lokesh from India, sharing a little bit about their world. So uh, the technology isn't really going to allow me to show this to you in here. So what Carol is going to help me do <laughs> is load a link for you to follow. Uh, it's only a couple of minutes, so I'm going to give four minutes for everyone to follow the link, watch the video, and as soon as you come back into the room, if you can just write here so I know everyone is here, that would be great. Um, so Carol, um, should I post that in, or do you still have that? There we go. Okay, four minutes, 11 and 17. Yeah, I just posted that twice because Alicia came in the room after the posting. Okay. Great. Alicia is with me. <laughs> ah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll introduce her as soon as everybody comes back. She's having Mac issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can be problematic. I put the timer on and it's just doing okay. a countdown and it'll um, sound a little ping at the end of your time. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yes, Alicia, I can see you're on your phone, but it's good that you are in the room. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> It's great. Those icons are fantastic. Yeah, they help, don't they? They're just ah. the shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah, very quick awesome. there, Peggy. <laughs> Excellent, Mel. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, any reflections on the video would be good in the text chat just briefly whilst we're waiting for everyone to come back. I, ha I have some questions. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you're going to be tested. <laughs> oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> oh, you're having oh, trouble no. with your audio today, Rachel. Oh. Well.
just might be pushing your computer configuration over the top today, Rachel. I'm sure <laughs> if you take a record of the link and play it again later uh, outside of the room, I think you'll find it'll work for you. Yoga and chai is a good day, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> So just about a minute to go for everyone to listen and make a comment on their way back. Uh, I'm just going to go and grab my power cord from my iPad. It's running out of steam. Be right back. Yay! <laughs> oh, great. Good job. <laughs> and I believe that's everybody. I was just looking through the list of names. So um, just real quick before I ask a cu couple of questions that I have with you, I want to introduce Alicia Resigno. Alicia just joined us. She, uh, she was having a few Mac issues, so she's here on her phone today. She is the education coordinator at Know My World. And she has uh, decided that she wanted to get on this presentation with me. So if there are any questions that you have during the presentation that you want to ask, please, <laughs> thank you, um, <laughs> please just message Alicia. She's there to answer anything additional that you might have if you don't want to wait till the end and you just want to talk. Um, so just, I saw a lot of your posts. Um, it seems like you all enjoyed it. But you know, outside of you know, what did you think of that? What's the power in it? What's the advantage for our students in sharing their stories? What did you get from watching that video? Empowerment, insight into another world. We do give them guidelines for creating the videos. Ownership, individuality, and I'm going to share that with you, actually. Authenticity, yeah. Yeah, it's really a great way to reflect on things that make us who we are and a way to connect with other cultures too, right? Like where does yoga come from? Where does this tea come from? Where do any of these things come from and how do I connect with those on a human level? How have I integrated them into my life? A chance to share. Absolutely, there's something so powerful in sharing our stories with other people in feeling the safety to do that, it's very freeing. Reflect on what I do before school. Can you expand on that? No? Walk a few steps in my shoes. Yeah, absolutely. Sharing your world with someone else. Isn't you know that an aspect that we really want? We all just really want to be understood by others. Yeah, I agree, Peggy. They are very brave. Yeah, it's very empowering to be able to record yourself and share yourself with the world. Um, I, even though I play guitar, I have not put anything on YouTube. <laughs> that, you know, that's probably my next step. C cultural differences and diversity. Yeah, lots of lots of great notes there. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you all for that. Okay. So some exchange examples. Um, this is going to be uh, three slides about 
out in five slides, actually, about a digital cross-cultural exchange. Story sharing is sort of how you can start getting involved, right? You get a lesson plan. It's like, okay, yeah, I want to get involved in the global conversation. I want to get out there and share with people what my world is about. And I want to learn a little bit more about others. When you want to get into a conversation and really engage in the dialogue and enrich your classroom experience, you can change the world, honestly. This, this is an example of an exchange, two classrooms, one in Mexico, one in the United States, who decided that they wanted to understand and change their community's perceptions about homelessness and poverty. And they wanted really to bring it to the attention, the teachers wanted to bring it to the attention of their students, and they wanted to help their students bring these issues to the attention of their communities. So the goal of the exchange was to understand poverty in their local community. And what they did was they went out and they interviewed people. They found people who were homeless or who used to be homeless and talked to them. They went to local villages to see how these people lived. And they researched the problems. And they researched current solutions to see what, what is it can we what is it that we can do? How can we change what's happening? Why is this happening? What systemically is getting in our way that we can adjust or work with to try to make a change for the future? And they created a Google community where they went on and they talked about the research they found when it came to food deserts, the, the lack of education regarding basic things like how to feed ourselves um, and, and how it's something essential, it's a basic essential need that people need to live and it's not accessible to everyone. And they took photographs when they were out, they learned interviewing skills by talking to people and they shared their reflective essays with one another online. They had, a, they had Skype sessions so they were getting engaged in the conversation about what they were dealing with and they really got an amazing, and we'll go through some of the reflections in the next couple of slides, cultural awareness about what they were dealing it with and what other people in the world were dealing with that were similar but different to their own experiences. Um, so these are some of the shots from uh, the kids in Mexico, the village that they went to and some of the local people. Um, yeah, I think one of the most important challenges in my community is to find some ways to help. And that's, that's an issue that so many people have in their lives. It's, yes, I want to do something. Yes, I want to help. But what can I do? I don't know what to do. And getting involved in an exchange like this and collaborating with people gives students a sense of agency and helps them find ways that they can make a small difference. And it starts with a basic conversation. It starts with sharing a story, even just that you want to make a difference something for something like that. And then it blossoms into something bigger. Um, these are some of the research shots and the shots of the students in Maryland when they were doing Skype with students in Mexico. Um, a little bit of a reflection essay up here. And they just, they got so involved in this exchange, it was amazing how excited the kids get when they get to share with other students doing the same thing. Uh, so one of the responses from a USA student, it's just, it's so amazing to see what the students get out of these exchanges, you know, it, even though the classes were so far away, they were so, were so similar to each other. Many of the problems that we're facing in our community are problems that are being faced all over the world. It takes them out of the context of their own lives and their own problems because we all tend to get caught up in the world that we're living in and like we know the world is out there, but if we're not seeing it and we're not engaging in it, then it's not something that we're always necessarily paying attention to. But incorporating a digital cross-cultural exchange allows you to see it. You get to see it firsthand and hear about it firsthand from people who are actually experiencing it. And in sharing your experience with the same sort of issue, it just opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for changing the world in positive ways. 
Um, and this was a response from one of the Mexican students. And it was just a very deep self-awareness I found when I read this one about understanding privilege. Because, you know, as, as young students, you know, especially if you're being taken care of by your family, and these, these, these two classrooms were full of very privileged students. Um, and they recognized that. They got that, you know, that they have everything that they need. And all the, you know, although they might not have everything they want, they still have everything that they need. They have access to education. They have access to books. And it's just, it's nothing that they think about because it's always there. But it doesn't mean that everyone else in the world has that at their fingertips. Um, so yeah, another reflective question. What do you think the benefits are of fostering cross-cultural relationships within your classroom? Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Understanding reality, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a deeper understanding of other cultures rather than superficial, right? We read so much about, you know, especially when you get into any type of world history class, it's not okay, well, this is what people do over here, this is what people do over there. Um, something that I found when I was in the Galapagos, I did in exchange with students while I was down there with a classroom in the United States. And what the teacher said to me about the, the biggest realization her kids came to, if they were fifth grade students, what they realized was that it gave them an actual 3D version of a map. She was explaining that the kids go in and they look at the map every day, and it's just, you know, it's a flat picture. And it's like, oh, look, there's the island. That's where people are. But they didn't really understand what that meant or how that looked until we started sharing videos with one another. And they're like, oh, my God, they're kids. They play games just like we do, and they listen to music just like we do. And, you know, what are the similarities? What are the differences? And they, they live on this island with these animals and these other people, and this is what they do for fun. And it really create created a deeper understanding in our students. Yeah, and yeah, it makes a smaller world because it does show how we're all connected. Yeah, the open and honest discussion of cultural differences and diversity and acceptance of differences. Yeah, and there are hard conversations to have, right? Um, it's like in all different cultures and all different areas, there are these certain taboo topics that it's, you know, can I say this? Is this okay to talk about? How should we discuss this thing? And finding a common topic to connect on and finding a way to integrate cultural culture into that is, is really an interesting way to get kids to be involved and accept one another's differences. And they really embrace it, which is it's just amazing to see how accepting they are of one another. Yeah, it's a great avenue to share your experience. Well, yeah, global empathy. Yeah, great. Absolutely, it's great for travel planning. <laughs> Reduction of stereotyping, that's a big one. That's This project did a lot in dispelling stereotypes for homeless people. You know, I mean, in New York, New York or in New York City, there's a lot of homeless people. I had a friend from Australia come and visit me, actually, and she asked me, she's like, what do we do with the homeless people? How do I act? What do I do? <laughs> you know, and it's, there are certain, everybody has a different approach to what it is that they do, and she was, she was explaining to me a bit about uh, Australian culture, which I found really interesting, but that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> It makes learning real instead of reading a text. Yeah, active and involved. The only way forward to changing attitude towards violence in the war. Yeah, I am with you, Coach Carol. Yeah, story sharing does change the world.
Yes. And it does. It stays with you. These experiences really are, because it's not just something you're reading out of a book. These experiences are, they're experiences. You know, when you get something tangible and you put your hands on something and you really get down and dirty in the grit of the experience and it's just something that you don't forget and it stays with you forever. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are going to talk about uh, some of the benefits of Know My World exchanges, projects, and programs. Um, and I have a slide for each one of these aspects here. Um, the career and academic advantage, obviously, this world is becoming more and more interconnected all of the time. Uh, the global workforce is something that people are entering, and employers want to know, you know, what experience do you have working with other cultures? How can you adapt? What is your, you know, cultural awareness like? The social, emotional, and cultural competency, you know, how are you with your, and I, your relationship building skills, your self-awareness, your self-management, your social awareness, your relationship building, you know, where do you fall in the realm of those things when it comes to the self, the groups that you work with, whether it's in your family, your communities, and the world at large. Foreign language skills, we have uh, classes that have been, uh, lots of people like to practice English, but we've had people practice Spanish, we've had them practice German, and you, you, we've had them practice Japanese <laughs> um, and Korean. So it's really just a matter of what you want to do with your classroom and how you want to engage your students. Customized project development. This is great because whatever it is that you need, exactly how it is you want to incorporate something into your classroom, we will work with you to make sure that everything is set up. You have time management down, project planning. So all you have to do is go to the classroom and teach it. And that's what the facilitation support is all about. And I'm going to get into that in a couple of slides. But you have people there collecting data. You have someone who you can talk to via email, via video conferencing. And they are always there to help you with technology, whatever it is that you need help with throughout this process. So you're never feeling like you're alone. You always have someone you can ask a question to. Because a lot of the times what we found when we first started doing these things, it's like, oh, great, let's get together, let's collaborate. And teachers would get, get together, and then it's like, okay, well, now what? Now what do we do? <laughs> so it's really cool to see the progression that we've made, and it's, it's, it's an excellent system. And it's, exchanges tend to last between four to eight weeks, but some teachers, after the facilitation is over, have stayed on for an entire school year because they just love the connection so much, and they understand how it works. So they've created projects. They've stayed friends. Um, Alicia actually participated in an exchange. We did uh, an, an individual adult exchange, and she's friends with three of the girls that she was involved in that exchange with. And uh, digital promotional materials, what we do is we collect the content that you share with us, and we give it to you so you can use it at school functions, so you can bring it home to the parents, so you can use it if you want to, you know, bring the video that you've made and use it, you know, in the newspaper or for a local video channel or something like that, we provide that material for you. Okay, first example. This is a really cool exchange. Okay, on the left is the picture of a Yupik Eskimo village in the tundra in Alaska. Um, they are 100% Yupik Eskimo, and then we have a school in Mexico who live, they, they're in the desert. So they're doing an environmental sustainability and climate change exchange, um, and they're discussing impacts of the environment, and they're sharing what they see. They're sharing the animals and what's happening to the animals, the agriculture, and it's, it's just amazing to say, you know, yes, I am interested in climate change, and this is a project I've worked on, and this is what I got out of this experience. And these are some examples I can use in my portfolio for whatever it is that they're going to try to get a job for. But they have the information, they have the resources, they have the digital footprints 
if they want to use that and put that out there. Um, and it's yeah, this is this has been a really fun exchange to be a part of. Um, social, emotional, and cultural competency. This is actually an example from one of our uh, program tracks. Uh, this is called Unquestionably Me, and these are students in uh, I think it's a where is it called in Taiwan, and they're reflecting on certain ways that they feel. Um, about themselves in the world. Bad, think, think of a negative way that you think about yourself or a negative way that you feel about yourself and just really get involved in the emotion of it and just write it down and be artsy with it and allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you feel. So after they decorated that feeling, um, if you look to the right, all the kids, you just tear it up, tear it up, throw it away, and then replace it with something else. So when they were done, they created positive words so they could acknowledge that they were feeling these things and that sometimes those feelings do come around, but what can you do with it and what can you replace with it? And they just, they had so much fun with this experience. Uh, <laughs> I am very excited about these things. Um, there was an exchange between North Korea and Mexico and they wanted to dispel stereotypes and so they made videos for one another. It was really cool. And so the top part, North Korea, will they attack? Um, that was something because they know that everybody is like, are you worried that you're going to get attacked all the time and what's going to happen? And the next slide on the video was not really. <laughs> they, you know, we don't think about it. It's not something that, you know, we bother with. We're just living our lives and going through, you know, you know, go to the mall or whatever it is they do. But um, but this exchange happened in uh, Spanish because North Korea wanted to learn, their students wanted to learn Spanish. So they had the exchange in Spanish. And because the kids were so interested in learning their language, the students from Mexico really wanted to learn how to speak Korean. So they started doing a little bit back and forth of both. Um, Okay, this is an example of the customized project development. Uh, these two classes both wanted to focus on architecture. So there was a senior class, a high, a school of, a high school class of seniors in Canada, and a class of kindergartners in Japan. And they both basically did the same project where they went out into the community and they took pictures of their favorite buildings and I mean, obviously, the high school seniors could focus a little more in depth on structure and things like that. But they followed the same program, and they shared the same things with one another. And they sent packages in the mail. That's what the, uh, the student in the middle is showing you. There's a picture that the kid decorated of himself to share and to say thank you for participating in this exchange with me. And they shared the process of their lives and what they did and what their experiences were like going out into the community and why the buildings were their favorite. And it's really cool, these types of exchanges, too, between uh, older kids and younger kids because it incorporates sort of a mentor experience for the older students so they get a certain aspect of leadership. And the really cool thing about it, too, that I find in the reflections of the older students is they find that they learn so much from the younger students when they don't realize how much younger students really have to offer. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, facilitation support. So this was uh, another project of ours. It's Journal Swap for Peace. And it's this was with 116 students, eight teachers in four different countries. And this is just an amazing example of facilitation support because the facilitator has to be involved with each one of these teachers, each one of these students, collecting the data, communicating with the teachers about what it is that they need, making sure the plan and the development is on track for the entire project. And the students are matched one to one. And they journal about their daily lives and it's a reflective experience for, you know, what you do in your daily life and how things um, are going with you. And it, it's an amazing project. And the facilitator is there to make sure whatever goals it is you are trying to get your, for your students are met. And they get such an enriching experience. 
and it's created in such a way that it's already set up. Everything that you need to know for it, everything that you need to do is just given to you. All you have to do is just incorporate it into your classroom. Um, oh, this was a fun one. Um, the shareability project. This took place between fifth graders in Taiwan and college students in, uh, in New York, actually. Um, and this is a, another one of the story sharing where uh, kids talk about leadership and they try, they have to create a story that they can share with the world and it's about how can you uh, change the world in some way. And this story to the, this uh, picture to the right, it was really interesting when we took photos of the boards that the students developed in both classes, it was difficult to tell. You, you couldn't tell which class created which chart. Um, but the CGP rules, this was a, this was a really cool story developed by the fifth graders in Taiwan. That's uh, Professor Frizeff to the right, right there. And she invented uh, an industry, a machine that polluted the earth and polluted the world and was just going to ruin mankind. So <laughs> the humans developed CGP, who is a computer-generated person who is going to stop Professor Frizzap and save the world and save the environment. Um, <laughs> so it was really cool to see how they took a problem from the world and the solution that they saw to sort of try to save that. And, you know, for them it was magic, <laughs> among other things. Um, so, yeah, before we go any further, just an, another question to gauge where you are. What do you see as some of the challenges that you might face in incorporating these into your classroom? Time zones, yeah. Barriers for management, like uh, technolo te technological barriers? Rules, like from the classroom? I'm a little confused. Trust. <laughs> Yeah, trust is hard. That's why we incorporate uh, very nice eating tables. <laughs> that's why that's why we make sure that there are social, emotional, and cultural competencies involved as well. Um, and there's always meetings that we have with uh, the teachers before things uh, progress. Formatting of sharing might not fit all, might not suit all students. Yeah, and that's, those are things that we all have discussions with the teachers about uh, in the planning process. As the facilitator, it's, what, we make sure that we have a discussion with the teachers. What are your needs? What is it that you want to teach your students about when it comes to global learning and responsible, you know, being a responsible citizen on the internet, being a responsible digital citizen is something that a lot of teachers are trying to teach their students now. And so it's a matter of incorporating new technology and trying to get them acclimated to different software that's out there. Um, but yeah, privacy is an issue, making sure that, you know, everything is private and things can't be shared. Um, yeah, back to time zones. That's, uh, that's an interesting one, too, because, uh, it, and, and that, again, that depends on the age, because we found with older students, they can, some of them can create it as homework, while others are in study hall or in class at some point. If they're closer in time zones, um, then it is possible to do Skype sessions. But there are so many ways to work around that, too, when it comes to video sharing. And, you know, sort of like, it makes me think of Snapchat. I don't know if you're all familiar with that, but it's, you know, you can have a conversation via video in so many different ways, problem solving and just sharing about your life and going back and forth in that way, um, whether it's in groups or individuals or as in a class as a whole. Yeah, principal may not want to use tech to network. Yeah, it's 
Yeah, sometimes uh, it takes a bit to get administration on board, but you can always uh, email me. I'll talk to your principal. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's difficult and it's new, you know. It's still something that people are beginning to have conversations about. It's like, how do we do this? What are the rules? What are the parameters? You know, is it okay? But it's it's becoming more and more popular, and it's something that so many employers are looking for, and so many students students want it. That that's the thing. If they could see how excited students got about getting involved in this, it's just a matter of finding a way and figuring out what works for you. And that's that's where the story sharing comes in, right? It's about, okay, so if we don't, if we can't do a digital cross-cultural exchange right now, what can we do right now? Yeah, a link to the curriculum should always be there, absolutely. Academic, cultural, social, emotional, there's always a way to incorporate it. Parental objections, yeah, we have, um, we have release forms because we do ask to share content on our website and everything that we have shared here today and everything that we share on our website has a release form signed by a parent saying that that's okay, but we don't give the identifying information of any schools or any last names or anything like that. Um, it's just a way to share what students are doing in the world and it's all through consent. Language. Yeah, language Language is an interesting one. Um, but it's interesting to see how much you can communicate even when you do speak different languages. I asked someone for a living room once and they handed me the salt when I was speaking in Spanish and my friends laughed because they're like, you don't need to learn another language. People just know what you want. <laughs> I had no idea what they were talking about until my other friend told me. Um, Ignorance from parents reflected, oh, ignorance from parents reflected in the children. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's something that, we, that's why we sort of, that's why we incorporate the cultural competencies and the social and emotional competencies. And in collaborating with the teachers, developing projects so different understandings can be reached. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer in certain instances, you know, and sometimes that might not go away. But it, I think it depends on the person. And I, I find kids to be very open to these experiences once they get involved in the process of it. Yeah, clarifying misunderstandings. Yeah, communication is a, is a very big thing. That's something that uh, we're very versed in at Know My World, especially because everything is done via via email. So much communication is done via email, and there's there's no tone, right? Like you can hear my voice right now, you know, sort of what I'm feeling. But when someone sends you an email and it says something, it's okay. How how is that being taken? How is that being heard? How is that you know hitting the other person? And we don't really know. So a lot of it has to do with making sure. People learn about communication through these experiences. They learn about their own communication. They learn about others' communications. Um, and it's challenging, but what we find at Know My World is it's really in the challenges that we learn and we grow. Yeah, right now a lot in uni, it's happening only in uni. But uh, there, there are a lot more classrooms that are doing it. All right, I'm going to move on because we're, I didn't realize, we are, we should move on. <laughs> All right. Okay, so these are just some of the challenges um, that uh, after polling teachers from all over the world, I mean, we've talked to teachers from all of the countries I've mentioned, Taiwan, Mexico, Japan, Australia, U.S., Germany, and no matter where you are, teachers, they're all, they're all facing the same issues. The administration, the lack of support from the parents, you know, lack of funding, there's not enough time for these projects. You know, I, I don't know how to use the technology. The kids don't want to use the technology. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get it in? And we've come up with solutions. You know, there are fully developed projects that can integrate seamlessly into your existing curriculum, that go with your existing curriculum, and it reaches the whole child. 
while still making sure you reach your academic content. So you don't have to think about, am I going to get my testing done? Am I going to get this done? This is just something fun that you get to share in with your students that really helps enrich the experience. You know, it, we've done so many things with so many different technological platforms. Uh, it's really cool because I get to learn about different things all the time. Teachers teach me things. I help teach them things. It's just a constant dialogue back and forth. Um, and they get to share these new ideas with their students. And really, when, when these challenges are met, you learn how to work together in such a deeper way. And it really seems to build great connections between the teachers. OK, so a bit about the benefits of facilitation. Um, so as I was saying before, and I've said this <laughs> throughout the, the process, and it's just, it really is amazing, the, the facilitation support at Know My World. It's you tell us who it is that you want to connect with in the world, and we find you somebody. You have a human connection throughout the entire process. There is someone who answers your emails, who can get on phone calls, who is always there. Emails are answered within 24 hours. The international educators, we're all international educators. The teachers that we're finding are international educators. And we work on relationship building, which is really what it's all about. That's just what brings us to the deeper level of connection, of understanding in the world. And we help you fit the seamlessly into your classroom while making sure it meets all of your goals. And uh, yeah, all you got to do is sign up. And what we found is that uh, kids, their responses, they, they love it. It's 94% positive rating among students. Um, yeah, over 148 students in four countries. It's amazing to think about how much we've connected. <laughs> and how much fun they're having. And these are students who have used all different platforms and talked to all different students from so many different countries. And these are just some of the responses from the kids that we've gotten. You know, the things we know now and the things we will know are all about how we interact with other people and experiences like this one. It's just so enriching when I reflect on their reflections, when I sit with the things that the students got. I mean, that's, that's really what makes this the greatest experience for me, is when I see what the students get out of this. And when I get to share with them, because I get invited to classrooms and things like that, so I get to talk with them and, you know, see how they're working together and dealing with things. And I get to watch videos and see exactly what it is and what they're doing. And just to see how engaged and excited and how much they get from this experience, it's, it's amazing. Um, okay, I think this is my last question. <laughs> Um, how can you incorporate cross-cultural exchanges into your classroom? Do you have uh, any ideas? Whoa. Don't worry too much about that one, Lisa. We've still got a few minutes, so really interested oh, okay, okay. in people's response to the last question. Yeah, and then I just want to give information. <laughs> yeah, good. You've done so well today. <laughs> oh, I think thank you. you ought to be a keynote next year. Oh, I would love that. I This is just such amazing work. I, I, I would actually I'd like to moderate for a session too. Yeah, come mm -hmm. on over uh, Thursday evenings at eight o'clock our time. Mm, 
what would that be for you? Um, Wednesday afternoon. That might work. Wednesday afternoon. Have a look. Are you on Facebook? Uh, have a look yeah. at the Australia E series. Okay. Yay, Peggy's voting Lisa a keynote for next year. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, we want to allow people time to get to the next session. So if you want to wrap up now, awesome. that would be yes, really Lisa. good. Okay. So um, this is the link if you are interested in requesting an exchange. Um, but I, I don't want you to leave without the bit.ly either. So is there a way, can I copy this? <laughs> just put it in a, here, I'm just going to put up a link real quick. Copy, paste. All right, that's the link if you're interested in signing up for an exchange. This is the link if you are interested. Uh, this is our conference support package. Actually, you need to take this with you. This has our digital information packet, everything from Know My World that you need to know, our projects, our programs, our, this has the story sharing lesson guidelines in it for you if you want to do something like Lokesh and share about yoga and shy in your life. Um, you want to copy that down and I'll just, yeah, you got it. Thank you, Peggy. That's awesome. And uh, this is my information, social media and contact. Uh, find us on Twitter if you want more information about our projects programs or if you want to work with us just there's my email you can contact me directly and like us on Facebook because you know we like that <laughs> absolutely we like that too and uh, you can grab all of the links by simply saving the text chat to do that go to file save chat give it a name and save it for today. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was truly awesome. I am so wow. impressed and so engaged. <laughs> and as your maiden presentation, I think we need a virtual round of applause and um, an actual <laughs> one. So here you go. Ah, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I, I had so much fun. I, I love this stuff. So, um, oh, good. Yeah, and thank, thank you for having me. Alicia to come along. And yes, I want to thank say you, thank Alicia. you to all our participants. Wow, what an audience you had today. Yes. They were so responsive. I, they really were. Then I wanted to talk to you actually about something you put in here. <laughs> some kind of cross culture. You, know, you wrote some, I'm like, I didn't get to talk to them. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that thank happens. you all for coming and watching and participating. It's it's been great to be able to engage in this discussion with you, and hopefully, I'll see you all in some of the other conference rooms. Absolutely, thank you again, and uh, we wish you good luck with the projects. And I'm sure you'll get more coverage now. We're going to promote it for you. And shambles, a uh, did you want to ask a question? Nope, he was clapping. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's All okay. Right, Thank you, you again. I'll close the yes. recording now. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Cheers.